Hi there, so today we're going to take a look at Crodo Studio Pro. We're going to redesign the sound effects for this clip here. Um, we're going to cover lots and lots of use cases really fast and look at some of the unique workflows that Crodo Studio Pro offers to do sound design here in Pro Tools. Okay, so let's dive straight in. So first of all, we're going to do some ambiences. So using the first preset, the city preset, I'm going to load that up right now. Um, as you can see, as soon as that preset's loaded, it starts generating sound. Um, we can then change the mix or remove completely elements of this environment to get the right balance for what we see in the scene. So this is kind of an urban scene. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to add any reverb or spatialization to this at this point, but I'm just going to try and balance the elements to get something that feels right. Um, okay, cool. So this is kind of a tense or police scene, so the siren sort of feels appropriate, but I'm not so sure about the, the car horns. So of course what I could do is uh, take this recording that we've already got right now, pick this up, drag and drop it into my timeline as a stereo WAV uh, and use this right, right away. However, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper and use some of the functionality of Crowder Studio Pro to do this. So I'm actually going to jump into the edit mode here using this button here. So this allows me to go under the hood of this preset that comes out of the box. Now I'm going to change uh, the horns layer here. So I'm going to go in here to the tab that says horns. Uh, I'm going to go into the drop down and say remove all samples. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'll jump back to uh, my library here and I've got a just a really simple air conditioner layer. So I'm going to drop, drag and drop that in and restart the preset. I'll turn up this layer. And using the XY here, I'm going to move over to that layer. Now we see we've got this nice generating um, air conditioner layer that feels a lot more appropriate for the scenario we've got. So I'm going to right click on this tab here, just rename it to Aircon and do the same in the XY pad. This allows me to easily uh, control this um, preset as it's, as it's generating the environment. So rather than those horns which felt a bit jarring, I've swapped those out for an air conditioner which feels a bit more useful to us now. Okay, so what we're going to do next to give me a little more control in the mix is I'm going to use the multi-channel output here of Crodo Studio to um, get each stem of this environment in as it's generating. So we'll see now that we're getting the sirens, the air, the traffic and the aircon coming out on these separate tracks. So the strength of this workflow now is, as I said, this is going to give me a lot more control. So if I stop Crota Studio now and stop the timeline, you'll see that these have printed out um, onto these separate stereo tracks. So for example, my sirens start a little late. I can now pick up that and move it further forward and literally just solo the siren layer that was generated and I can now reposition that mix it differently we've got the same for the air con the traffic and the air so now really quickly I've generated a custom ambience and I've got those out as stems to go into the mix to control however I want or hand them off to someone else who's then going to continue to work with it but I was able to create that custom ambience get the layers swap out a layer that wasn't really appropriate for it and move on really quickly okay so let's keep going um, we can see that in our scene again we're going to have uh, the character is going to walk up some stairs so we're going to need some footsteps so I'm um, just going to mute my ambience there just for a sec. So um, going into another little instance of Crow Studio, I've loaded up the Boots Urban preset. So what happens here is as I click, it generates a step. I can, of course, move to different surfaces here at, at any speed by just clicking the mouse. Um, but we, let's take a look at another way of doing this. Uh, so obviously, since we're in Pro Tools, we can actually use the uh, MIDI input. So arming the MIDI input on the track. I've got Crodo Studio on a stereo MIDI track here. So now I can actually just use my MIDI controller just out of shot here to control these steps. And that's going to help me with automation and all this type of stuff later on. So again, let's go and record these as she steps up those stairs. There we go. One. Perfect. Okay, so I could, of course, use the drag and drop, um, perform with my mouse, but for this one, I just wanted to use a MIDI controller and also just to demonstrate a lot of the other ways of working with um, footsteps or other use cases in Crowder Studio. All right, so we've got our ambiences. We have got our footsteps. Now, let's keep going. I'm going to do a uh, cloth foley pass now. So I've loaded up a, another instance here that I'm going to use for the rest of the tutorial. So I've gone to the foley category and the basic cloth preset. So by clicking and moving in this preset, you'll see that this is going to make sound. Now I've got this routed out to another audio track here uh, through a bus, and you'll see why in just one second. So of course, again, anytime I interact with Crowder Studio, it's generating a performance. Uh, in the cloth foley patch here, I can control what type of cloth we're actually using here. But since our character is wearing a leather jacket, I'm going to go down to the leather corner. 
now I've got something that is going to fit what I actually see on the scene. Now, of course, I could drag this over the performance I just did that and sync it up by hand. That's more the, more the traditional way of working. But what I'm going to do now is because I've synced this up and armed the track with a bus, I'm actually going to perform the Foley in real time and sync it directly to the timeline as if I'm actually performing an instrument. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, great. So in that little one take, we can hear the foley that I did, the cloth foley pass that I did now on top of the uh, footsteps. Now, I stopped just before this shot here, where she then lifts her arm. So I'm actually going to do that offline and drag and drop it in to show how that can be done as well. So I, I know what I want. I want this just got a quick little lift, something a bit like that. In fact, the ending wasn't quite right. So I'm going to take another go at that. Okay, let's try that. So when I, once the recording is finished, I'm going to drag that over to my cloth foley track and I'm just going to sync that up with the arm lift as it comes up. It's going to be about there. Okay, great. Now, of course, I could re-perform that, use the same workflow. I can do that as many times as I want and drag it over. So we've got some footsteps, some ambience. Now, the next shot we have here is our character is actually going to fire the weapon. But as they do that, they actually lift the uh, pistol. So I'm going to go to a gun foley preset here and I'm going to perform the lift uh, of the rattle there. Okay, uh, I quite like that. So I'm going to wait for it to finish. I'm going to drag that over. And again, I'm going to sync that up with the footage. There we go. Let's hear that in action. Okay, it needs to be a slightly little bit earlier. Okay, great. Okay, let's keep going. So the next thing we see is the uh, fire of the weapon. So I'm going to scroll down to my weapon category. I'm going to open up the pistol preset. And just clicking here is going to trigger the effect. I can move that further away, left or right, but I just need a nice, clean, powerful shot. I'm going to increase the power, drop the pitch a tiny bit. Okay, cool. I like that shot. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to drag that in, sync it up with my marker that I've got in place for the shot. Now let's hear that back. Okay, um, that's a good start. I think I need something a little bit more powerful though, so I'm actually going to layer a shotgun underneath. I'm going to adjust the, the tail layer here. Uh, again, I want that to be a bit, bit more meaty. Okay, cool. So let's try that in here now as well. Let's layer underneath. Nice. Okay, great. So one last layer, I think, just to make this shot even more powerful. I'm going to jump into an explosion. And I'm going to reduce the debris. I don't want any debris because I'm not really technically using this as, a, as an explosion. But if I click and move and pan, I get this really over the top weapon tail, which makes this feel even more Hollywood than it was before. So let's layer that in as well. Okay, right now we need something on this little trailer reveal here. So I'm going to go up to my cinematic category and I'm going to go to the dark entry preset. Now clicking and moving here, it's going to generate these layers that I think could work quite well for that little trailer section as well. So let's drag that over. I probably don't want the hit there, so let's just add a fade and let's see how that lands. Fantastic. Now I would like one more effect here using the feedback rush preset. I'm going to do a kind of reverse reverse effect to lead into the other shot. I quite like that very quickly. So I'm going to drag that in, turn it down, try it again. Excellent. And just to finish it off, we recently added some music presets to Quero Studio. So let's take a look at how we can add something in there just to have, have in the mix there to add a little bit of atmosphere. So I'm going to use the audio suite functionality here. So I'm going to highlight the area that I think we're going to need um, our uh, musical content. So let's close this window. I'm going to highlight this whole area in a stereo audio track and then go to audio suite. I'm going to open up the track and I'm going to load up a music preset here. And there's one here called There May Be Blood, which is nice and dark and moody, which I think that might work quite well. All right, so um, let's preview. I don't want the drums, I just want the strings and eerie tones down here. Okay, so uh, without stopping the preset, I'm going to stop the preview and render. Now we've got a little extra tense music just to add a little bit of tension throughout the scene as well. So let's go back and put it all together.
Great. Okay, so that's a very quick run through, a real speed run through uh, design of a scene using Chrono Studio Pro. So we did ambiences, footsteps, foley, some cinematic effects, some gunshots, multiple layers of stuff. Got that all in really quickly. Customized everything as we went. Got it into the timeline and got a really quick pass on this footage really fast. Uh, we were also able to customize some of those early sounds. You can do that for everything we looked at going into the edit mode, adding your own sounds getting those presets just to be what you want to get to the design that you're looking for in that sound. So thanks for watching. Head to Crowdust.studio to download a free demo and take it for a spin yourself. Thanks for watching.